Today I'm going to show you how to make a steampunk octopus which you can use to decorate a pith helmet or hat. To start with I'm going to use a white pith helmet bought off the internet. Step one is to use some of these curtain pole rod sockets and bolt them to the side of the helmet. I've bolted the curtain rod sockets to the top part of the helmet. The next step is to cover the helmet in cling film to protect it. I've wrapped the helmet in cling film to protect it because I need to build some things onto the side. So I need the shape of the helmet but I don't want to damage the fabric underneath. So first I'm going to build a rough shape for the body for the octopus. So for this I'm using a ball cock from a toilet system and a piece of plastic pipe. I'm going to mount these to the side of the helmet and just hold them in place with some tape for now. I've just taped the ball cock and plastic pipe to the side of the helmet for now. This is just to hold them in place whilst I build up the other parts of the octopus. For the tentacles I've got these jointed wooden snakes bought from the internet which I'm going to wrap around the helmet and then attach to the plastic body. I've made a small semicircular piece of wood which I'm going to mount under the body. This will allow me to attach the tentacles under the body and hold them in place whilst I build up the head section. I've stuck the tentacles into holes that I drilled into the wooden semicircle. This will hold them in place. I can now attach this to the body of the octopus. I've simply bolted the wooden semicircle to the plastic pipe to hold it in place. This now needs to be mounted on the side of the pith helmet. I've wrapped the tentacles around the pith helmet and held them in place with some tape. The next stage is for me to build up the head part of the octopus. To build the body of the octopus I'm going to use this polymorphic thermoplastic which you can buy from the internet. You simply boil up a pan of water, add the plastic beads to the water, they melt and become pliable and then you can mould it into the shape that you want in a similar way that you mould clay. One of the advantages of this plastic is if you're not happy with the finished product you simply immerse it again in the boiling water and that will allow you to reshape it. You need to be very careful when doing this because you are dealing with a very hot liquid. So obviously this is boiling water so you've got to exhibit quite a lot of care. Just add the plastic to the water. This will instantly start to melt and it becomes clear as it melts. Try and keep it all together because you want to pull it out as a single lump. If you can see it's gradually clearing up so the white beads in the middle still haven't got up to temperature yet but all the ones around the outside are now transparent so when the ones in the middle are melted as well I can then pull this out. Okay so you want to be careful when you pull this out because obviously this water is boiling so you want to let the excess water drip away And then this plastic, you can see you can squeeze it and mould it into shape. And as you squeeze the beads together, they start to form a nice smooth surface rather than a bobbly textured surface. So I sort of shaped it into a flat piece and I'm now going to mould this around the body and tentacles so that it should fit nicely together. So here's the head molded out of the thermoplastic. As it cools down to below 60 degrees centigrade it starts to become hard. I smoothed over some of the rougher parts of the thermoplastic with some epoxy putty. I now need to sand this so that it's ready for painting. I've glued some of these small plastic stops around the octopus to act as rivets. First I'm going to spray the whole thing with some plastic primer. I'm now going to cover the octopus in fine texture paint. I'm going to spray some coarse texture paint just around the edges of the body. I'm now going to spray the whole thing a copper colour. I'm 
sprayed over the top of the copper with a brown spray paint but only a faint dusting so that you can still see the copper shining through. The next step is to dry brush over the top of this with copper paint. Here's the octopus after dry brushing with copper paint. I'm now going to drill a hole in either side to make an eye socket and then put a marble inside to act as the eyes. Glued the eyes in place and painted all the rivets a brass colour. I've now got to reattach this to the pith helmet. I've attached the octopus to the pith helmet by screwing through the pith helmet into the body of the octopus and also through the pith helmet into the tentacles to hold them in place. I've painted some green verdigris staining around parts of the octopus focusing on low points. And here's the completed piece.